Hello, everybody, and welcome to an, another or our second Coffee with Conrad. I almost said tech talk there, force of habit. I've got some muscle memory here. Um, today, we're going to be talking about privileged identity management um, and how just in time and just enough access can help defend your mobile workforce as we're working from home. But there's a lot more uses than that. Um, and of course, I am here with Conrad Agramont, our CEO. How are you doing, Conrad? Doing good. Got a cup of coffee, ready to get at it. Same here. All right, we'll take it away. Cool. Um, you know, like we talked about in, in this type of session is, you know, instead of getting like our regular tech talks where we get like super deep in, in, in whatever the topic is, instead it's like, you know, what's the, the overall high end, you know, business view of this? And how does this, you know, particular topic or capability really make sense for, um, you know, for customers? So there's this, there's this one capability in, um, in uh, Azure Active Directory, it requires the P2 license, you know, which is basically in EMS E5 and Microsoft 365 E5. Anyway, so this you have to have that license to do this. And so, what is this? Well, first let's talk about you know one thing in, in Azure Active Directory and kind of a general problem, and why this thing is I think a super super must have for anybody that's in a regulated industry and including anybody that's doing anything with, uh, you know, government or government contracting. So we do a lot of work for government contractors uh, under 500 seats and, you know, they have these regulations, you know, this 800 being one. And then now there's a CMMC thing that's coming out, TFARS, ITAR, all these things. And one of the biggest questions or one of the biggest areas inside of Azure Active Directory is that it is so powerful and what it can provide as service to all these different people and all your users. And they really provide a nice uh, uh, framework for how you can secure and manage that. So there's all these different roles. The one role that stands out amongst everybody else is global administrator. And global administrator is this one role. It's when you first create it, the first person is the global administrator. That role is supreme. Access anything create anything, uh, could change your billing. If you, if you, if you update, like, let's say, uh, you know, we, we, we archive information, we do e-discovery, we do that. This role can do anything, can see anything. So it's very, very powerful. Now, akin to what you'd used to have in Windows Server and kind of Windows environments, like a domain admin with one key difference. Well, I guess a few key differences. One of the key differences is that, you know, when you were when you were an, uh, a a domain or enterprise administrator, really domain administrator in Active Directory, you would have the ability to create servers and manage those things. Really, anything Windows related, you could do it. But if you installed Exchange, if you installed like SQL, there was kind of a natural barrier that there's some things you couldn't do, but you could kind of add yourself into it. Um, with Global Administrator, that's really not all the way true because it can by default because everything's there in the Microsoft 365 world can do everything. So maybe I've made you a little terrified of that role. But mm -hmm. the nice thing, unlike on the Windows side, there's all these other natural roles such as like user management. So those people can create users, reset passwords, do those types of great for help desk, security administrator. Uh, there's all these other roles that have a more focused set of activities in your environment but the problem is that you know when you give when you when you assign that user to that role, they have those permissions for as long as you keep them in there. But these, but most people don't need that access all of the time. But when they need that access, which is the right access, you know, so that not everybody should be a global administrator. When it's the right access for the right person at the right time. So you could say, well, that's all well and good. Um, it's true. So PIM, Privileged Identity Management, facilitates this. So you can say, for the right person in the right role, I want to be able to give them access for a certain amount of time. Um, now, when you do that, you also want it to, to ensure that, well, now that I'm going to give that to you, I may want you to also MFA again. You know, well, you've already logged in, but do it again. Because like now you're going to do something important. So one of the things that, that PIM really does, and I'll show you in this next slide as I go through it, you know, why this is so important, but it's because you want to be able to also track that. So every time somebody, this is what's called activation, 
So if you assign somebody to a role and you say they can have it for a limited amount of time, by limited, you get to define as a default an hour to two hours. And you can also say, I only want them to do that once or twice a day. Right? So, so now they have this role for a limited amount of time. When they activate it, they, um, they have to justify it and it gets logged and recorded, right? So this, again, they're getting just what they need and it gets logged and recorded. Um, and you can make sure that when they use it, it's, it's at the right time. So, you know, while it gets logged and recorded when, when they're, they're activated, um, but when they activate it, you can put another safeguard in if you want, which is an approver. So somebody could say, I want to be a global admin. They submit it. It has to go to an approver to then say, wait a minute, I don't think that's justified. I may want to stop them. You don't have to do it for everybody. You can say, well, when it's user management for those people, when they activate it, yeah, go ahead and let them do it. Don't approve it. But when they do these bigger roles, I need some justification and I need somebody in the middle to va validate it. So you kind of pair it up together. Again, this thing does it, does it all for you. But the one that I think is, you know, uh, even better is, is that how you can get these reviews. So again, you know, when you do these role requests, and by the way, when you when they do request it, whether approved or not, or you have an approver or not, it notifies the others in the roles that says, hey, this person is now being activated to do something. So they can get email notification, you can go to a log, you know, so this setup for these really big roles are really, really critical. But the one that really makes me the most, you know, excited by all this is that, um, you know, while that you can control that, while it gets logged, there's one other key thing that happens, and it's something called access reviews. Now, I know when you hear access reviews, you're going to think, well, is it because, you know, it's a report and I look at it and I see who accessed it? Yes, there's that, but that's not what this is. This is where the system, you, you define this, so I'll just give a generic configuration of what it is. You can say every, on the first of every month, uh, I want the, this PIM will email out to those people that you've assigned and say, hey, I need you to justify why you need to keep that role. And for this setting, it's configurable. For this setting, I give them uh, uh, you know, two weeks to do it. If at the end of the two weeks, those, because you know, people on vacation, those people don't respond, their role gets removed. So if they don't respond and they don't write a justification for it, they're automatically gonna be removed. So which means they're gonna have to ask me again and I gotta go through that process. If they do justify it, um, I get a chance, me being you know, the, the, the main CIO or whoever I designate for this, they could to continue to approve it or change it. Not only that, when the person goes in to, to respond to this, it will give them an update like, and it will give them a recommendation whether you should keep it or not. And maybe they don't need it. And lastly, it logs all of that too. So think back in, in a year, now you know who logged in, what, what was it for, and, and what their justification was to keep it even if they didn't use it. Very, very powerful from a logging and auditing because a lot of times I go into CIOs or other IT directors, like, well, I give these people their permission and I know they do things, but I don't really know what, when, and how. This way, all your admissions are like, well, I trust them to do it. It's not about trust, it's about records. So here's an example of somebody activating their role. So they're gonna get, they're gonna get a role, um, uh, you know, their, their start time, how long they're gonna use it, their reason. So they have to write a justification. You can make a requirement. There's one other field that you don't see in here that you can't have it, which is a ticket number. So you can make this a mandatory thing. Like every time you activate it, you put in the ticket number and then you go do it. Now, maybe from your help desk people, they do this all day long. That's their job. Maybe you don't need it for that. But if your help desk person, as they're working on things that sometimes they need to make a change to a security policy, or sometimes they need to make a change to, to exchange, or sometimes they need to make a change to something else. That's a good place for them to be required to activate, give a reason and a ticket. So now you know what ticket, what action, what was it for? So you get to link these things together. So to me, that's why I'm like really, really excited by this. Again, the, 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 the bummer part is that it needs Azure Active Directory P2, kind of the more advanced license on it. But it allows you to really control this so that your permissions, your capabilities just don't run away. So 
that's why I think it's a it's a, a really cool thing. Why I, I really feel strongly that if you're in finance or health or anything else, you absolutely have to have this in order to say I can tell you when certain people needed more rights, how long they were, you justified it, and I make them put a ticket number in. Whatever your ticketing system is, they, there's always like a number, right? And they can put that in there and their own justification. Hey, here's a ticket, needed to do this. The other two resources aren't available. I understand what it is, hit the button. And you might still have an approval for it. Like, oh, there's that ticket number. That I, oh, those people are on vacation. Okay, approved. So that's why I'm really jazzed around PIM. That's why I think it's really, really required. Again, you could do it just in time. You can have approvers, you get it all documented. Um, and it still gives people the access that they need, but with the control and documentation that both you may be required to do or just makes you sleep better at night when you go through it. Um, anyway, so that's uh, so that's PIM. Uh, those, that's kind of the high level part of it. You know, when we do tech talks, normally that's when we'll, you know, really show it and do a demo and show how this is and show some settings. But, you know, Coffee with Conrad, this is just, you know, me getting really excited about it because I really think it makes a difference for all of those businesses. Again, this thing doesn't make your 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 end users more productive, but what this does is it makes sure that your business has good controls, and you can ensure that people can still get the access that they need, still perform the actions that they need, but with the control, the visibility, and the reporting that 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 when you look historically, will just make you more confident in in what you have as a system. And and you know, for us, we have this thing called onboarding Azure Active Directory. It's kind of a standard piece of the deployment when we set up customers, we do a lot of other pieces in it. Um, and if the customer has that associated license, we configure this as well and kind of walk them through it um, just to make it um, you know, pretty easy for them. So um, that's how we, we get it going. Excellent, thank you, Conrad. Um, we yep. have had a couple of questions come in. Um, All right. I'm gonna be selfish and ask my question first. Now I touched upon a little bit of this in last week's Tech Talk, uh, talking about zero trust for remote workers. And when I was doing the activate authentication, the duration that I had could only be selected up to two hours. Is that something that can be configured um, so that there's a max duration that can be requested? Yeah, so when you config, so for every role, every role, uh, so there's like a default setting, but then there's a, also a per role setting. So you can say, I want them to have it, I can't remember, but it might be like up to 24 hours or something like that. Um, but I think that when it's something I think the higher the role, I, 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 you know, I just, you know, and by higher, I mean the, the more strength and capability that it can have. Like global admin, the shorter the window should be. Right. Right. Now, there was this other thing <clears throat> came out uh, several months ago. It is a glorious role, I believe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so where there's the global administrator who can see and do anything, there is a global reader who can only see everything that they're, they can see everything, but they can't make a change to go, oh, I actually want to go into that mailbox. Can't do that, right? Because they can only read things. So they can see, oh, there's a mailbox with a mailbox setting. So that's a fantastic role when, uh, you know, if, if somebody says, well, what if I, what if there's a problem and I need to go check on things? And if, if I only have global administrator for an hour, I, I can't see it to go fix it. Well, you could give them the global reader access for maybe, five hours or six hours and then give and then also allow that person to have the 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 global admin uh right too but only make that an hour so they can activate the reader go oh, okay now i can see the settings i can see the configuration oh maybe i don't need it maybe i don't even need to make a change maybe i just need to explain oh the reason it's not working for you is you don't have that permission it's the way it's supposed to be oh well can you change it oh that might be a different ticket or approval process right but if they mm -hmm. did decide to change it, they could say, well, let me activate to either that global admin role or another role that is for that for that topic and put the ticket in, justify I need to make this change and then and then go do it. So um, that's a nice way to kind of mix it. And then also, you know, set the duration and the time that you really feel like like it's, it's warranted. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, OK, so the next question is. Does proper implementation of PIM remove the need to have separate generic admin accounts besides a break glass account? Um, you know, that's that's somewhat of a, uh, a that's an interesting topic. So I, I I think that it is a good way to get rid of an admin account. Um, and 
you know, we actually did this ourselves. We we had a bunch of, you know, in our staff, everybody had this, you know, admin dot account. And we, we'd say, well, 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 you know, that's the one you have the high privileges on it. Um, and then your other account, you don't because, you know, no need to be surfing your email when you also have this powerful account. So you'd separate them. Well, now with this, well, I don't really have that level of activity unless my job every day is being a user management thing. So, but if that's my job every day and that's what I'm doing all day long, having two different accounts just seems, you know, cumbersome, right? But you can put conditional access roles to make that even tighter that says, hey, when when the person is day to day and they're working from the office or they're working from other locations like WVDs, like, hey, that's where you do all your admin stuff. When you're at your desktop, at home, I, you, you know, I don't want you to be able to do that so I can control that. Anyway, um, so yeah, so with PIM, you can you can have it where uh, I just use my regular account because I'm always going to know the username for passwords for that. I'm always going to have the right MFA on it. Um, and so that helps me set control and including in this where it can it can hit them with MFA again. Now, one thing is when you activate it, because when you do this here, as you can see here on the in the Azure portal, when you activate it, I then have to log out of the portal and re-log in because it's when I re-log in that, you know, my magic, you know, my magical permissions now appear. Um, and then at the end of that duration, they can no longer do what they're supposed to. Like, you know, now they got to log out and log back in to, 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 to kind of get back to themselves. They don't get to go past that eight hours and keep doing stuff now to just start firing off errors. Okay. And we got a qualifier while you were speaking. Um, so for reference, this organization falls under CMMC. So that's the perspective the question comes from. And I think this might be a larger conversation that we want to take offline. Um, so we could reach out to you to discuss this. Um, but Conrad, is there anything quick you can say on that so we can move on to the next question? Um, you know, with, with with CMMC, just like a lot of other um, uh, uh, you know, uh, frameworks for regulatory, um, they never really give you rules on how to do it. They just say, you know, do you track and do you log? You know. Do you review your logs, right? This is uh, the word right out of NIST 800 which is a big part of CMMC. So, you know, do you control it here? Yes. Do you review it? Well, the system does it on its own and they have to do it or I can take it away. And if they're not, I can review it. So yes, but then there's like, well, you still have to do some, you know, as good manager stuff to go review it. But now it, it, I'm reviewing this. So whether you use two different accounts or not, as a broader philosophical view and there's different ways, but this either way gives me control. Even if they have an admin account, I would still do this. Okay. Um, all right. So there was a comment there. Gotta love the government and their vague requirements. And yes, yeah. after having read ITARs, DFARs, and then spending months reading CMMC, um, I agree. It can be vague, but um, it well, can also be a lot. They're paid by the word. I know it. Well, hit, hit. All of them have it. HIPAA has the same thing. Um, you know, PCI is the only one that gets a little bit more explicit, but they only tell you block these, block these, but they don't tell you like, oh, well, on that Windows server, you should do this. Right. Um, there is something like that with C, you know, CVE scans, but that's a whole other talk. So another question here. Um, besides the Azure AD P2 licensing, does the user trying to use PIM need any additional licensing? Uh, they don't. Um, you know, depending on the application, some apps want you to have their app licensed in order to control it, manage it. So this, but this with PIM, uh, now there's some new updates coming, but I won't talk too much about it with other custom roles or whatever. So right now I'm just going to talk about the generic roles. The generic roles all map to Azure Active Directory. So if you have an Azure Active Directory P2 license, well, basically every, everything in, a, in the Azure AD sphere um, is covered in there. So um, that's really the only thing you you would really need to to make this work for you. Okay. Um. So I've got a question on this one. Um. Now there are a number of different types of admins, and one of the more unique ones that I've run into doing the security and compliance stuff with Microsoft is the compliance admin. And you can have a compliance admin where your global admin doesn't have access to the com compliance manager. They can make themselves a compliance manager to get that. Um, can you use PIM for these other admin roles? So any anything that's a default role that's baked into Azure Active Directory is available. Okay. So there's like, I don't know, 20, 30 roles or something that's out there, like the security manager, compliance manager. And almost every one of them has an associated reader. So you can have a compliance reader. Those reader roles are really great for um, 
you know, managers who are responsible, but at the same time, like you can be a manager responsible for the, for the, for your compliance engineers. So you'd probably want to make the compliance manager an available reader so that way they can hold the other compliance engineers accountable, but not a admin where they essentially can do the work for them or make changes. So it's based off, you know, so it's clear separation of roles. That's nice how they compare up. Yeah, I like that. All right. Well, I am not seeing any other questions coming in right now. Um, again, everybody feel free to ask these questions. Um, and I put this in chat at the beginning this time um, to ask questions as we go through the session. Um, we're happy to answer them. If there are no more questions. Well, let me just make one more statement on this before we cut it off. Of so course. One thing that I'll, that I'll say, um, and I, I, I feel Sharon is caring, and I, I, I hope people believe, know that, know me, know that uh, I try to be as open and honest as much as possible. When we did this ourselves internally, we rolled it out, um, you know, because it was not just a different process, but we were really starting to break in, in, in our own organization, what was something very common of, for people to have all this access, right? It was scary, it was a while ago. And again, this is just for our own, uh, own internal systems. People were frustrated by it and they hated it at first. And, but think about it, you know, this now means that there's an extra step into it to hold them accountable. And nobody ever likes that in the beginning. And no admin is going to tell you that they're going to want to do this because they feel like it slows them down. But sometimes slowing them down is the absolute right thing to do. Or else they just go in there, click, 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 do it. I don't know. It's like, well, isn't it logged in Azure Active Directory? It's like, yeah, if I knew they did it and I scrounged around for it, but I don't even know why they did it. Now I got to go send an email. I got to call them, right? Like I got to have a meeting. This stops all of that time. It slows them down. They justify it, especially if they have to put a ticket number. By the way, the ticket number, again, depending on the role that you define, maybe they don't all need it, but some of them you can do it. So very right. customized. Can I just ask for another bit of clarification here? In our migration, was it end users that were affected or just admins? Just admins. Yep. Right. So it's just the admin team. So if you have an admin team of, uh, but what if I only have three admins? Right. Okay. You, do all of them really need to be global admins? Well, sometimes, sometimes, perfect. So they can still have the right and they can still do it sometimes and now they can activate it. Yeah, and there are so many reasons to build that wall between the different roles. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, credential theft, stolen devices, um, if somebody does get into that account, then you don't want them to have the keys to the kingdom. I'm getting so sick of that term. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean what kingdom had you know keys at the front i mean seriously had a guard up front i don't know that's another fun topic but anyway i think this thing is great um it, it once you set it up yes it's different training for the it people to do it yes it's going to be a different culture to some degree hit when they do it but you know i'll tell you again from our experience after two weeks, it was over. They just all got it. They know it. There's never any real complaints, and and they get why they need it. And I get to have the logs and justification when I want it without having to email them, have a meeting, or ask my managers to give me a report to go figure it out and have meetings. So to some degree, that gives time back to the business for things that I require and I can get from it and not do that. Great. Thank you, Conrad. We're coming up on the top of the hour. Um, so just a reminder to everybody, um, we are putting these all up on YouTube on the Agile IT channel. And if you go back to the registration page, agileit.co slash CWC, I'm linking those videos in onto the calendar. So we're going to have a running update um, as well as if you are subscribed to this channel, I'm going to be sending out a recap with links to the week's videos, as well as a link to our weekly tech talk, as I feel that that kind of fits in as well. Um, and so you can look for that in your email box, but again, uh, at agileit.co slash CWC, we will be linking all of the Coffee with Conrad sessions, so these will be easily viewable. And we did have a question about wanting to show this off to uh, management so that they don't need, or so they know they don't need global admin rights. Um, so this is great. Um, I'm glad we can be helpful. Um, I'm really excited for next week. Uh, where we're going to be continuing again Tuesday and Thursday. And again, in that email, I'll be sending out a calendar for the next week's events. And they're also available there on the subscription page.
Thank you very much, Conrad. Is there anything you want to add last minute? Nope, that's it. All right. Well, everybody stay safe. Thank you very much and have a great day. Thanks, everybody.